Welcome back. We are discussing the success of the Congress's poll promises in Karnataka, what it means for the forthcoming state elections and central election, and more importantly, for state finances and central finances. I'm joined by senior BJP leader, Mr. Sushil Modi, he's Rajya Sabha MP, former Deputy Chief Minister of Bihar, and most important for this conversation, former chairman of the Empowered Committee of State Finance Ministers at the GST Council. Mr. Modi, thank you very much, sir, for finding time for me. Well, first up, your assessment of these Congress promises, do you think it was uh, the poll promises that brought home the bacon or uh, do you think uh, we shouldn't worry so much, this won't become an epidemic? No, I don't think that poll promises and like this promises of five guarantee, mm -hmm. they have played a bigger role or a very important role in the results in Karnataka. Mm -hmm. So I don't think so. Okay. They may have played a minor role but they can, can't tilt the balance in favor of Congress. Okay. Because, see, people don't believe these promises. <laughs> but what is happening, when one party announces some uh, freebies like this, mm. so in this competitive politics, the other party is also compelled to announce mm. these kind of freebies. Mm. So I've seen even in Tamil Nadu, mm. when Jalita was in power, she announced and she could not come into power again. Yeah. So it is not necessary... Even if you find in the in the last elections mm. uh, of uh, <clears throat> many of the states, <clears throat> we'll find that whatever was promised in Gujarat, the Aam Aadmi Party promised like anything, like uh, giving heaven to the uh, bringing about heaven on the on ground, but they could not garner much much support. So I don't think these promises uh, cut much ice in the elections. Okay. Well, so I don't think that uh, this has played a very important role okay. in bringing about Congress in Karnataka. Okay. No, I agree with you, sir. There were some outlandish promises I saw from the Congress in the UP election, where clearly they never stood a chance. I think some uh, lacks in terms of medical bill is what they were promising. But this, if you looked at the elections previous UP or, uh, you know, Telangana elections, Tamil Nadu elections, as you refer to, free power free grains and a basic income to everybody. That's kind of becoming the norm. I mean, even the central government's uh, Kisan Samman Nidhi is to some extent a basic income. The uh, Telangana uh, 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 promise was similar. Now the Congress promise in Karnataka is 2,000 rupees to every woman, plus grains and uh, power. You think this formula now will be applied in all states in the forthcoming elections? No, see, I can't... Uh... I can't promise or I can't give a guarantee that it will be uh, taking it in the other elections or two also. Mm -hmm. The political parties will announce similar announcements. Okay. But see, one thing is clear that they're providing food grain. Even the central government is providing food grain. Yes. But it can't be forever. Yes. It can be for a limited period, about one year, mm -hmm. six months, 12 months. Uh, that, that can be, you can announce. But if you are uh, 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 announcing free grains for a lifelong, I don't think it is uh, It is good. Mm. But see, what is happening, it is not the question of what is bad, what is good. Mm. And it is very difficult to demarcate between what is freebie and what is uh, uh, what you call um, uh, announcements for uh, welfare of the people. It has become very, mm. very thin line yeah. to demarcate between these two things. Okay, and see, now BJP is also being compelled we, we didn't want it to give go for this kind of freebies. Mm. But our state government says also to announce in Madhya Pradesh, they've also announced in Karnataka, BJP also announced mm. that free three free cylinders will be given to each and every household. Mm. So now this kind of competitive politics, it is ruining, it will ruin the economy of the state governments because it is unsustainable. Mm. Like the old pension scheme, yes. all these things are unsustainable. Mm. And this all started with the Aam Aadmi Party because of cheap politics and to and to um, uh, anyhow to come into power, they are promising moon to the public. Yeah. And to some extent, and I know that in <clears throat> uh, in a state like uh, uh, Chhattisgarh, mm. they announced that they will give 500 rupees, or I don't remember 500 mm. 15 rupees over as a bonus uh, for the Kisan for the paddy procurement. And it worked wonder. Yes. But see, these promises work wonder if there is a strong anti-incumbency, if the incumbent government is not very popular, mm. 
Yes. So all these things play a role. Mm. Um, no doubt it play it plays a role. Mm. But it is uh, it is not good for the economy and it is not good for the country mm. that each and every party is going for this kind of freebies and promising moon to the electorate during elections. Okay. Uh, well, sir, as you started off, it was, I, I thought, a very important observation you made that how do you define a freebie? It is becoming a very thin line. Uh, you know, um, Jailalita had started the midday meal scheme back in the late 80s and 90s. It became a national program after first being condemned. Uh, Maharashtra was the first to announce employment guarantee, and then that was in the 60s and 70s, and then it became a national program. So some of these are pilots in the states and they actually get taken over. So should we tar everything with the same brush, especially when, at least in the midday meal scheme, Karnataka could pay for it. Uh, the state had the finances. So should we be a little legit about it and not tar everything with the same brush? No, see, uh, what you said is correct. When the midday meal scheme was launched in Tamil Nadu, it was not cherished by the politicians. And now it has become a necessity, it has become a mandatory. And because of midday meal schemes, the students are at least coming to the school yes. because they are getting uh, food, they are getting lunch, mm. free lunch. And, the, and, and because of that, the enrollment uh, and the admission to the school increase like anything. Yeah. So to some extent, it is required. Mm. But the kind of politics that is taking place in India, like this old pension scheme, yes. earlier, this is the same Congress party mm. which implemented uh, this uh, new pension scheme when Manmohan Singh was the Prime Minister of this country and Chidambaram was there. Yes. And now the same party which implemented now this going back to the old pension scheme. And so people want, people, if you promise anything free, everybody is ready to take, yes. even if they're, uh, if they, they even if they're, uh, if they don't need it. Yes. And it becomes very, very difficult not to universalize. Mm. But uh, I think it is not good like a uh, uh, free bus. Yes. Why it is required free bus? You, you, you give concession to women. Mm. You give concession to handicapped or the old people. I can understand that. Mm. But uh, providing a free bus ride, it is not a necessity. Free medical aid, I can understand. Free food, I can understand. Mm. But why free electricity? Yes. We should charge something each and every state. I'm mean, from Bihar. We are also we were also providing subsidized electricity. Yes. But if you don't subsidize if you don't provide subsidized items mm. and you give it free, then what is happening in Punjab? Mm. The water level has gone down. Yes. For the last eight or ten years, they were providing free electricity. Now, what is what has happened to the water level um, in Absol Punjab? Absolutely. So it will it will affect not only the economy; it will also affect the environment. Yes. Now, because it is free electricity, they are using more and more electricity yes. to take water. Um, from deeper uh, from, and deeper uh, levels. Down, yes. From deeper and deeper and deeper levels. That, no, that so point these is are the issues. But do you expect yes. now, therefore, both central and state finances to get a big knock? As it is, you know, uh, the central finances are, uh, what, 6.4% 6, 6 fiscal deficit. Uh, it's, it's a fairly serious number. Now with the central election coming in, uh, do you see both state and center finances uh, in a difficult situation. I say center more because there it is 6.4 deficit. At least in the states, it is capped at 3%. No, no, but the center government is, say, during pandemic, it was about 8 to 9%. Mm. Now it is coming down. Yes. And they have also announced this is a budget or trajectory, how in the next three years it will come down from 6% to a uh, lesser number. Mm. So, so the central government is also, and in the last budget you have seen, Whatever there were off budget borrowings, yes, that were all uh, the, everything was cleared, mm -hmm. like uh, Food Corporation of yes. India, uh, like NHI taking loan, and all these things were cleared. See, in the, in the states, I think how to check this, uh, uh, the, this freebies, uh, what the states are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I have an idea in my mind. They see the states can't borrow without taking permission from the, from the center. Government. Yes, there is an article in Constitution two ninety three. Yes. yes. Which, uh, which says that each and every state government can only raise uh, market borrowing or can raise the loan with the permission of the Said. union government. Yes. And at the beginning of the budget, the union government provides the figure to each and every state government, keeping in mind the recommendation of the Finance Commission, yeah. how much loan states can take. Yes. So if it is strictly adhered to, yeah. 
And see, there is another provision, 293.3, yes. which says that the union government can uh, can put conditions also for those yes. using lay, a loan. So if you're using 293.3, mm. if the union government put a condition yeah. that, uh, yes, you can take loan up to 3% of GSDP, mm. but that loan can't be used for, uh, you, can, you can prescribe which are the items on which these loans, which loans can be used. It can be used 60% yeah. for capital expenditure, yeah. 30% for such and such purpose. No, I, so this is this I, is one thing by which you can contain the state government's announcing. So I am things. not terribly impressed that the centre has been all that more careful than the states. I have got data here only from uh, FY16 because that's all I could fit in. But I can go back all the way from 2000. Uh, the st centre has been actually way more flouting fiscal discipline than the states. Uh, the states' uh, uh, interest paid as a percentage of their revenue receipts is around 12 to 14 percent. The centres has perennially been 35 to 40 percent of their revenue receipts that goes uh, as interest payments. Likewise, if you look at the outstanding total debt, net liabilities, this is a status paper put out by the central government uh, in, uh, in mid-2022. So it has data only till 21. The total central outstanding debt is 59% of GDP. The center's total outstanding is, the state's is 28%. And if I go back in time, this uh, FY16, center's is 47% outst uh, percent of GDP outstanding debt. State's total of all states is 21% of uh, GDP. So, I mean, I, I, is the center um, losing its moral stance to uh, point a finger at the states? No, I don't think the centre is losing its moral stand. See, the 15th Finance Commission has recommended 60% of GSDP, 40% for the centre and 20% for the states. And the centre is all because the centre is a more responsibility looking after defence also. Then there was a border tension. Then there was a pandemic. So the centre is also it's a, it's a fiscal deficit is also coming down, and they have chowed out a trajectory that in the coming three years, how it will be, uh, the numbers will come down. So the center is also trying its best. And because center is a much more of a bigger responsibility because of defense, because of mm. the foreign affairs, because of uh, communication and, and other things. And you can't say that uh, central government is spending money like uh, announcing freebies and uh, giving freebies to the public. But in but in states, but I don't I can't I don't say that all the states. Mm. It are some of the states, like for Andhra Pradesh, mm. like Telangana, there was off budget borrowing. Mm. Off budget borrowing means your borrowing is not reflected in the budget. Budget, yes. It uh, escapes it escapes the three percent of GSDP. Yes. Now in the last two years, central government has clamped down that no state can borrow, and and if some state has there is off budget borrowing. It will be adjusted with the loan there they will take in the coming years. So by checking this off budget borrowing, then putting condition, I think to a great extent we will be able to uh, contain this politics of freebies. So you will have to suffer. Like I was reading in the newspapers that is this Karnataka promises that will entail about forty thousand to sixty five thousand crore. Yes, which is which is about fifteen percent or twenty percent of of their GSDP, this, this figure is, so how the Karnataka is going to sustain and see the states like Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal, Kerala, they are getting a revenue deficit grant. At least Karnataka was a revenue surplus state. Yes, it was a revenue surplus. Where these states are revenue deficit, deficit state. On the one hand, you are distributing uh, your, your money to the people who like anything and you are getting from Finance Commission as a revenue deficit grant. So, in Bihar, when I was finance minister, in not a single year, we were revenue deficit. We were always revenue surplus. Okay. So we were penalized. We were not getting revenue deficit grants. So, uh, and those I, states like Andhra, Telangana, Kerala, Bengal, they were getting more than one like eighty thousand crore as a revenue deficit grant. So now the central <laughs> government will have to take a call on these things and this two ninety three three. Yep. Then this off budget borrowing. 
So all this, they, they will have to also take care of all this. I'm course. unfortunately out of time, sir, but I am less okay. beholden uh, to the way the central governments in the past five, six decades have behaved. The revenue deficit was first shown, the path was shown by central government. Ten years later, only state governments reported revenue deficits. And I think the way in which the cess has been designed by the central government, now it's almost 28% uh, of the total gross tax revenues. I think the states also have a legit complaint, but we are out of time. Thank you very much, sir, in any case, for Thank your you. perspective and for the confidence you give me that poll promises don't win mandates. There are a whole host of other things that gives me hope. Thank you very much for joining me, sir.